Hello, this is Mr. Victor, and I'm here to talk to you about some tips and answers to frequently asked questions for close passage analysis. You can use this for Marcus Zusak's The Book Thief, or for just about any other text. One question a lot of people are asking is, what kind of passage should I pick? I'd recommend picking a passage that's rich in language, but the good news is The Book Thief, just about any page is rich in language. If you happen to have annotated or sticky noted a page while you were reading over the summer, I'd say go with that one, because you must have marked it for a reason, right? Otherwise, I would just say flip to a random page, open it up, and if you think creatively, you can make it work. Another question people had, what if you can't choose between two possible passages? I'd say look at each one, read it over, and then give each one about one or two minutes of trying it out. You can try it out by marking it up and annotating, or free writing the thoughts that come to your head when you think of that passage and when you read it. After those one or two minutes of trying it out, think about which one felt better for you and go with that one. Another question people had, how big or small should I make my passage? Here's the rule. It's got to be long enough so that you have a good chance at finding some patterns within the text. If it's just a small paragraph, it's not going to be enough to sustain a pattern. On the other hand, you want it to be short enough that you can focus really intensely on it. If it's four pages long, you're not going to be able to zoom in on the words. I bet most people's are going to be about two pages long. If yours is longer or shorter than that, don't worry as long as it meets the two rules I just mentioned. Another question, this is the last one. When I start annotating, when I start looking for the words that I should put into the text column of my four column chart, what should I be looking for? You want to find words that surprise you, that stand out to you for some reason. Stay aware of your first impressions because they matter. You also want to pick words that create rich images in your mind. Why? Because the next step after you pick out these words is you have to write some observations about them. Start talking about what they make you think of. If the words are surprising to you, if they stood out, if they create a rich image in your mind, you're going to have a much easier time writing about them. In terms of focusing, I recommend starting with looking just at verbs, then looking at verbs and nouns, and then expanding it to look at everything else. Why? Strunk and White say, write with nouns and verbs, because they are the core of our sentences, they matter the most, pack the most punch. C. Edward Good is one of my favorite style masters also, and he says that verbs are even better than nouns, because they pack all the action in the sentence, and they're much harder to make boring with jargon and stuff like that. A noun-heavy sentence can drag you down a little bit. So that's what I recommend in terms of focus. All right. I'm Mr. Victor, and I hope that helps.